So these are the guidelines that we're going to follow. This is evidence-based practice expert panel report number three and the last time that these were updated was in uh, 2007. So when it comes to asthma, lots of times we just think about the symptoms. And really the symptoms are just kind of the top of the iceberg. And what we really have to think about is the airflow obstruction, the bronchial hyperresponsiveness, and the airway inflammation. And I kind of alluded to this a little bit in the very beginning, in that lots, this is how we use our medications. Our medications are used to treat uh, these three main components of asthma. Benchmarks of good asthma control, a patient reports no coughing or wheezing, no shortness of breath or rapid breathing, no waking up at night, normal physical activities. And again, this is something you really need to assess for because parents will limit a child's physical activity. Um, and sometimes children will also self-limit. So make sure that the children are doing everything and it, the sports, etc., that they really want to do. Assess about school absences for the child as well as missed time at work for the parent or caregiver. Classifying asthma severity, initiating treatment and use uh, 12 uh, in adults. Again, you're going to have impairment and risk. Symptoms, nighttime awakening, short acting beta 2, interference with normal activity and then lung function. Intermittent, less than two days a week. Nighttime awakenings, less than two times a month using a short acting, less than two days a week. So it's the rule of twos. If you can remember the twos for intermittent, that helps you a lot. No interference with normal activity, a normal FEV1 between acerbations. FEV1 greater than 80% predicted and an FEV, FEC ratio that's normal. For mild, greater than two days a week, but not daily symptoms three to four times a month of nighttime awakenings, greater than two days a week but not daily use of an inhaler, and not more than one time a day. Interference with normal activity, you have minor limitations, you have an FEV1 greater than 80% predicted, and an FEV, FEC ratio that continues to be normal. With persistent, moderate, you have daily symptoms. You wake up uh, one time a week, but not nightly. You may use your albuterol daily. You may have some limitation with normal activity. Your FEV1 is greater than 60%, but it's less than 80. You have FEV1 FEC ratio that's reduced 5%. For severe, you have symptoms throughout the day. At nighttime, you wake up almost every night. You use your albuterol several times a day. Uh, and normal activity is extremely limited. You have an FEV1 less than 60% and an FEV, FEC uh, ratio reduced uh, greater than 5%. Again, your recommended step for initiating uh, treatment, intermittent step 1, mild step 2, persistent step 3, uh, severe step 4 or 5. And again, when you get to step 3, you really want to uh, consider referral at that point. Managing comorbid conditions is also going to be extremely important. Uh, as you get to the older individual. So stepwise approach, uh, not a lot different. You can read through these. Um, at this point, at 12 and older, you can consider your sub-Q allergen immunotherapy for patients who have allergic asthma. And you definitely want to refer uh, for that because you can have some um, anaphylactic types of reactions with those medications. Remember, check your adherence, check your environmental control, check your comorbid conditions. Again, you need to decide uh, what category your patient fits in when they come back for the next exam. Well controlled, not well controlled, and very poorly controlled, and this gives you a good indicator for that. And at the bottom, there's your recommended action for treatment.
Here's an asthma action uh, plan example. And this usually works extremely well, especially with the younger patients. The colors of the traffic light kind of help you um, determine when you use your asthma medication. Green means go, so use your preventive medicine. Yellow means caution zone, so you add your quick uh, relief uh, medication. And red means stop zone, so you know to get help. There's a, when the patients get older, and especially if they have moderate or severe asthma, you don't want to teach them to use a peak flow meter. Some patients are not very attuned to when their asthma is getting more severe, and they are also good candidates for peak flow. Other um, sources will say that you can use just the symptoms, and that gives you a pretty good indication. But if you have both, it's really nice to have that subjective as well as objective data. And this is a sample of a long-term treatment plan when we talked about writing things down for the patient. It makes a really big difference, especially when they're first diagnosed. And this is an example of how it would be filled out. Of course, they're going to be treated a little bit differently when their asthma is under control. And of course, they look at the peak flow. If they start to have a cold or a mild asthma attack or a viral upper respiratory infection, lots of times that's what it takes to kind of get things started. So their peak flow may go down a little bit between 75 and 80 percent. So they need to use their um, beta-2 agonist, their albuterol, two puffs every four hours. And their inhaled uh, low-dose corticosteroid, one to four puffs two times a day. Now if they start to get a rapidly worsening asthma attack um, and their uh, peak flow falls below 75 percent, then this tells them what to do. And they're also going to begin uh, the oral steroids at home and notify their MD or healthcare provider that they are having problems. Unless you write this down for a patient, it's going to be really hard for them to remember exactly what to do in each particular step. So just the summary, uh, know your stages of asthma, uh, know how to evaluate if they're well controlled or not well controlled, think about all the things that you need to assess before you make any changes like medication adherence and all of those kinds of things, know when your follow-up would be, know which medications fit which stage, and know how the medications are working and have a pretty good knowledge of the medications in this particular um, section.